Because this song is in two different parts. Let's see if it goes up there. It's rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, oh, that was so sad. Re All right, fourth grade. Nice job. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, okay. So before Miss Phillips starts the song, I want us to get into two parts. So what I have is on this side, you're going to follow the boys, okay? If you're on this side, you're following the boys. If you're on this side, you're following the girls, okay? So the song is, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Do it with me. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. I feel like I'm singing all by myself. Okay, let me hear you do it again. Ready, go. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Thank you so much, Better. I don't like singing all by myself. Okay, so that's actually going to be this side. So you're following these guys. And you can just kind of walk to it and then go. Okay, this side, you're going to be rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. I think you can do even better, don't you? Yes, okay. Ready, go. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. This is the hard part. Are you ready? They're going to happen at the same time. And if, I gotta say, I'm gonna see which side can really hold it together and sing it out, okay? So it's gonna be the boy side here, or we're gonna have the girl side here. All right, are you ready? So actually, I'm gonna have you guys start though, because it's hard to start it both together. But no matter what, you keep going. No matter what this side's singing, you keep going. Give me a thumbs up. Okay. Ready, set, go. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Keep going. Rejoice, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. I heard some of you keep going over here, but not everybody kept going. It was like they started singing and you're going, hold on, what? What's happening? No, you keep going. Keep going. Oh, okay, we'll try it again. Okay, everybody get ready. Here we go. This side, come on, you can do it. Ready, go. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice to the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Keep going. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. We're doing it. Come on. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. One more time. all of it the whole time either either part
Thank you. Hopefully that got some energy out because Miss Gregory is going to come up here and give our AR awards. start with fifth grade this time. Our AR point winners are Shane. Oh, can they hear me? Okay. The first AR point person is James Allen, Taylor Coletti, Alexis De La Rosa, Rudy Jesse, and Olivia Van Cleek. Good job. Next we have Ms. Moyer's class, Aiden Brady, Bryce Burgess, Callie Cato, Gabriel D. Pass, Cadence Elkins, and Mia Newland. I'm also going to call out our five fifth grade virtual. That's Maggie Bell. So we'll give her a hand to Maggie Bell. Okay, next we have fourth grade, Miss Aldridge class. Addison Coyer, Kendall Davis, Adam Finati, Drew Frazier, Luke Frazier, Joshua Joseph, TJ McCaslin, Ashlyn Perry, Ryan Riva, and Kyla Slaughter, and Trent Thomas. Good job, guys. Next, we have Miss Skinner's fourth grade class, Jarius Abraham, Jaden Ash, Madeline Harris, Tristan McSheridan, Griffin Moyer, Ellie Varney, and Sage Walker. Job. Next up, we have Miss Newton's class, third grade, Savannah Colon, Caselyn Coco, Mason Griffin. Can you hear me? Okay, Elena Masick, Matthew Mendoza, James Moody, Savannah Needham. Okay. Okay, next we have Miss Buell's class three, third grade, Sophia Chura, Natalia Laura Cabrera, okay. Savannah Masick. Let's wait till the very end to clap. Easton Riley, let's wait. And Shinolia Small. Okay, and we also have a third grade virtual. We have three and third grade virtual. Isabella Chamberlain, Delaney, Delaney Dennis, and Jordan Rees. Okay. So virtual. Okay, next we have second grade Miss Humphreys. Brody Ash, Madison Collins, Scarlett Didier, Lillian Harvey, Amelia Holmes, Sophia Holmes, Toby Hino, Ryder Jimenez, Jackson Rollins, Ryland Slaughter, and Aaron Stanley. Okay, next second grade we have Miss Wright's class, Jaden Caraballo. Kai Franks, Ari, Ari Gonzalez, Summer Manna, Duncan Moody, Millie Rigdon, Radiant Sampson, Christian Turksey, and Mackenzie Williams. <laughs> Next we have Miss L's class, first grade. 
Aubrey Cato, Silas Chuva, Mackenzie Colden, Aiden Day, Megan Harris, Colton Johnson, Gabriel Lorocabello, Dakota Masick, and Lance Perry. And last first grade, Miss Roberts class, Jonathan Broggs, Easton Garrison, Lucy Goldstein, Brennan Jenkins, Roman Martin, Mason Montgomery, Sophia Pando, Reese Riva, Lilia Skies, Lacey Walker, and Percy Whiteside. Okay, we also have one virtual first grade two, we'll call him out, Michael Brown. Thank you guys for good reading and keep it up. If you didn't make your goal this year, you'll definitely do it next time. Keep reading. Can everybody say thank you, Miss Gregory? Thank you, Miss Gregory. Okay, I want everybody to be nice and still for me. No more talking, please. And let's give a hand and a warm welcome to our speaker, Mr. Van Cleef. And be good listeners, please. Oh, thanks so much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, that was very nice. Thank you. Um, today, I'm going to introduce you to a book. And I understand that your theme is joy, and this book has joy in it. And it has a lot of other things in it. And um, we'll go through it together. And I have some pictures to show you up on the screen once we get started. So the name of the book is Pilgrim's Progress. Has anybody ever heard of that? Raise your hand if you've heard of that book. Okay, some of you have. How many of you have ever read that book or had it read to you? Okay, many of you have. Well, this is a kid's version. It's called Dangerous Journey. And I read it to my kids. And it was written by a man while he was in jail. He got put in jail for preaching. And while he was in there, he wrote this book, and it's a wonderful book. It's a story about a man who leaves a city of destruction and goes to a heavenly city. And he has a lot of adventures along the way. And I won't be able to read the whole thing to you today because it's too long, but I picked out some parts that we can go through together. And it's called an allegory. An allegory is a story with a hidden meaning. Okay, So everything in this book represents things in the Christian life. Okay, So let's get started. App. You can put up the first picture, Miss Phillips. That is Christian, and he has a big burden on his back, and no one can get it off, and he doesn't know what to do with himself. So I will read the beginning of the story to you. I dreamed that I saw a man with his face turned away from his house, a book in his hand, and a great burden on his back. I looked and saw him open the book and read, and as he read, he wept and trembled. And not being able to contain himself, he broke out with a lamentable cry, saying, What shall I do to be saved? For he lived in the city of destruction, which he learned from this book was doomed to be burned with fire from heaven, in which fearful overthrow both himself and his wife and their four sons would miserably perish. So Christian, for that was his name, went home to talk with his family, and they were greatly worried. And with all haste, they put him to bed. But the night was as troublesome to him as the day. Instead of sleeping, he spent it in sighs and tears. When the morning came and they asked him how he was, he told them, worse, worse. He started talking to them again, and they began to lose patience. Sometimes they would make fun of him, and sometimes they would ignore him. So Christian went by himself into the fields, still reading his book and carrying his burden, and greatly distressed in his mind. He looked this way and that way, as if he would run, yet he stood still because he couldn't tell which way to go. Then, in the distance, he saw a man approaching. His name was Evangelist. And there he is. And he asked Christian, why are you weeping? What are you crying for? And he said, sir, this book in my hand tells me to flee from the wrath to come. Also, I fear that this burden which is upon my back will sink me lower than the grave. Therefore, I need to get rid of it. If this is so, said Evangelist, then why are you standing still? Because I don't know where to go, he answered. Then Evangelist pointed with his finger over a wide field. Do you see that yonder wicket gate, he asked. No, said Christian. Then do you see a shining light? I think I do, said Christian. 
Then said Evangelist, keep that light in your eye and go in that direction. So shall you reach the gate. There, when you knock, it will be told what you should do. What do you guys think the burden on Christian's back is? Do you guys know? Dalen? Yeah, it's sin. It stands for sin. Because sin is something that weighs us down and makes us sad. And what do you think the book is in his hand? The Bible. Bible. That's right. Very good, you guys. So, I saw in the dream that the man began to run. And Christian runs, and we're going to skip ahead a little bit but two people try to stay with him but they can't stay with him they don't want to go with christian and finally he makes it all the way to the gate i believe that's the next picture yes and there's a man at the gate and his name is goodwill so christian runs up to the gate and he knocks on it and goodwill lets him in and he says I saw in my dream that Christian asked him if he could not help him off with his burden. He asked Hopeful, the other guy in the picture, can you get my burden off? But who's the only person, but the burden represents sin, and who's the only person who can take away our sin? Jesus, right? God, that's right. However hard I try, said Christian, I don't seem to be able to move my burden. No man can get it off, you said, goodwill. But if you keep to the straight and narrow path, it will lead you to the path of deliverance. So Christian began his journey. How far will it be, he asked himself as he proceeded on his way. Next, we'll go to the next slide. Christian comes. He still has his burden on his back, but he comes to a road that was fenced on either side with a wall, and the wall was named Salvation. Along this road did burden Christian run, or should we say he did his best to run with that load upon his back? At the foot of the hill, he passed an open tomb. Then, up again on a little knoll, he found himself beneath a wayside cross. And as its shadow fell across him, so suddenly the burden slipping from his shoulders fell from off his back. It tumbled down the hill, it tumbled into the mouth of the tomb, and it was never seen again. Christian kept feeling behind his back. He couldn't believe it, for it was very surprising to him that this simple act of gazing at the cross had set him free. And his burden of guilt was gone. As he stood there in amazement, three shining ones appeared. And the first one said, your soul is now swept clean of sin. The second took off his mud-stained rags and gave him bright new clothes. And the third one handed him a parchment. Guard it carefully, he said, and surrender it only when you have reached the gates of the celestial city. Great dangers lay ahead of him. But for the moment, he was as light as air. So Christian gave three leaps for joy and went on singing. So what do you think happened in that scene? Yes, in the back. That's okay. Go ahead. He got saved, that's right. And his sin came off, and he was never seen again. That's what happens when we get saved. God forgives us of all our sins, all the bad things that we do. God takes them away. Just like Christian, his burden fell off. And he was felt as light as air. And look, doesn't he look different now than he did at the beginning of the book? He's got new clothes. He looks like a different person almost. And that's what happens to us when we get saved. God changes our heart, and we act differently. And sometimes, before you're saved, your teachers might see you. And then afterwards, they can tell there's a change in your heart. And they'll say, "That, that child is different. That student is different. And it's the same thing that happened to Christian. He became a new person. But his journey isn't over. He's still got to go a long ways. All right, go ahead and go to the next slide. So on his journey, he met two men on the road, and they were scared because they said there were two lions ahead. And he, had to, he wanted to get to the palace, but the lions were in the way, and the guys told him, don't go there, Christian, don't go there. Okay, so it says in his, he saw in his dream that Christian made great haste toward this palace, but as he came near in the darkness, he heard the roaring of lions. And the only way forward was along a narrow path, passage which was about a furlong from the porter's lodge. And he knew that the men who had been afraid had turned back from here. And Christian was never so near to running back after them. But the porter at the lodge, you can see the man there in the background. His name was Watchful. He perceived that Christian made a halt. He cried out, is your strength so small? Don't be afraid of the lions. They are on long chains. If you keep strictly to the beam of light in the center of the path, they cannot reach you. So Christian moved on. He took good heed to the direction of the porter, 
At the same time, he trembled for fear of the lions, for now they were on either side of him, straining at their chains, and how they roared and snapped at him, and how they tried to catch him by the foot. But Christian soldiered on boldly, and in another minute he was through and reached the gate unharmed. And he asked the porter, Sir, may I lodge here for the night? So Christian had to have faith. As long as he's, if you can see that narrow beam of light coming from the doorway, as long as he stayed on that beam of light, the lions could not hurt him. But he had to believe that was true. And sometimes God asks us to believe things that maybe, you know, they're hard for us to believe that are true. Like none of us have ever been to heaven, but God promises that we'll go there if we're saved, right? But we haven't seen it before. So Christian had to have faith at this time. And it was scary for him. Sometimes we go through scary times, and it's not easy for us to have faith. But we need to be brave, just like Christian with those lions. Well, you can go to the next slide, Ms. Phillips. Now that he made it to this palace, he met some ladies who were named Charity, Piety, Prudence, and Discretion. And they decided they, he needed an outfit to continue his journey because it was very dangerous. So they gave him the, the armor of God. Some of you know what that is from Ephesians, right? The helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, okay? Right? The breastplate of righteousness. And so, right, from Bible man, right? And so they, they equip him with those weapons so he can go on his way. All right, and those are the things that we need to keep in mind as we're going on our Christian journey. But once he gets his weapons, he has, he has an encounter with the enemy, which is Satan, and he battles Satan. It's a very difficult battle, but Christian comes through it okay, but he loses many of his, his armor, but he keeps his sword. He keeps the Bible, which is the word of God. And so go to the next slide, Ms. Phillips. He comes to a very scary place. It's called the Valley of the Shadow of Death, and I'll read to you a little bit about it. I saw in my dream that Christian had now to enter another valley, the darkest place he had yet encountered. It was a very lonely place where there was no water. No one lived there, and its silence was the silence of the grave. Here, Christian was to be more sternly tested than even his fight with the enemy. It started when two men suddenly ran out from behind some trees shouting, Go back, go back. But Christian went forward with his sword in his hand, feeling his way step by step, for the path was very narrow. And on one side, on the right side, there lay a very deep ditch. And on the left side, there lay a marsh so dangerous that even a good man, if he were sucked in, was never to be seen again, for he could find no bottom for his foot to stand on. It was all so dark that when Christian tried to avoid the marsh, he almost fell into the ditch, and he never knew whether his next step might be his last. But God gives him the grace and strength he needs to to get through the valley of the shadow of death. And sometimes we feel like in our lives things are really hard. Sometimes school feels really hard. Sometimes tests and quizzes seem really hard. Sometimes the things that are going on in our lives seem really hard and scary. But God gives us the strength to get through them, just like Christian was able to make it through the valley. His journey continues, and he meets a friend. And it's good to have good friends, isn't it? It's very important, right? Good friends are very important. So go, if you go to the next slide, Ms. Phillips. His friend's name is Hopeful. And then Christian and hopeful are able to support each other. And if you know people in your life that are good Christians and that love the Lord, those are the people that you should hang around, and those are the people that can support you in the bad times. Your parents, your good friends here at school, it's very important. Dale, why don't you sit up so you're not laying down on the chairs? Okay, it's very important to have good friends. All right? And if you have good friends, you should cherish them. You should be nice to them, you know, help them out if they need help, listen to them, and not be rude to them and mean to them. Okay, so... It was well that Christian and Hopeful, as his new com he had Hopeful as his new companion, he would soon be in dire need of him. For I behold and held in my dream that they had not journeyed far, the road being very rough and their feet very tender with traveling, when they became much discouraged. Because they've been walking for a long time. At this point, Christian espied a stile. That's that where the gate is there. It's a little shortcut. Which led into a meadow and seemed to be a shortcut. Here's better going, he said. Come, good Hopeful, let's climb over it. What if it leads us out of our way, asked Hopeful. That's not likely, replied Christian. Look, there's another man walking ahead of us. So this represents when God tells us to go a certain way and we don't do what God says, difficulties can come to us. Go to the next slide, Ms. Phillips. So over the stile they went, and Christian was well pleased that the path was easier on his feet. But in leaving the road, he had made a terrible mistake. For soon night came on, and it grew very dark. They completely lost sight of the pilgrim ahead. Suddenly they heard in the darkness a shriek, followed by an eerie silence. We'll go no further, said Hopeful in a whisper, clutching at Christian's arm. 
Who could have thought that this path would lead us nowhere, Christian exclaimed. I was afraid of it from the first, admitted Hopeful. I would have spoken up before, only you're older than I. Good brother, let's try to go back again, Christian urged him. But even as they tried to turn back, it started to rain and lightning and thunder in a very dreadful manner. Where are we now, asked Hopeful, without hope. His companion didn't answer. He was completely lost. From the deluge had caused the waters to rise and wash away the path, and they were in great danger of being drowned, had they not found a narrow, a narrow ledge with an overhanging rock. And here they sheltered as best they could and waited for the dawn, and being tired out, they fell asleep. You can go to the next slide, Miss Phillips. But they were found by an angry giant. His name is Despair. It was broad daylight when they were awakened by a grim and surly voice. What are you doing? It said in my private grounds. And looking up before them, they saw the gloomy figure of giant despair. You were just poor pilgrims. We've lost our way, they said. You're trespassing, said the giant. Trampling down my fields, I'll have to teach you a lesson. And he threw them in his dungeon. You can go to the next slide. And every day he would beat them to make them sad because his name was Despair and he wanted them to be sad and to think that they could never get out of the dungeon. And he had an evil wife at night. She would tell them, he would tell, she would tell him to beat them every day. It was a very rough time for Christian and Hopeful. Go to the next slide, Ms. Phillips. However, and you can't see this picture very well, but Christian remembered that he had a key in his pocket and it was, and it was called Promise. And so Hopeful said, Christian, why don't you try the key and see if we can get out of the dungeon? And guess what? The key worked. And so while the giant was sleeping, they escaped. And he woke up at the last minute, but they were able to get away. And sometimes the giants in our lives, the things that are hard for us to overcome, sometimes they, make, they get us down and they make us sad. But you know what? God promises in his word certain promises. That's why you guys memorize scripture in your classes. That's why it's so important to read the Bible, because they're full of God's promises. And God promises to take care of us. And God promises to love us. And God promises that even through hard times, we can trust him. And so when Christian realized he had a promise in his pocket, they were able to escape from the giant. Okay? So after they meet the giant, you can go to the next slide, Ms. Phillips. They come to a, a happy place, a place where God gives them rest. And they meet some shepherds. And their shepherds allow them, I don't know if you can see it, to use the telescope, and from there they can see the city that they're trying to get to. It's still far away, but it's close enough for them to see it. Okay, so they continue to journey there. And finally, whoops, they reach the edge of where the city is. And in this picture, the, the city is bright and shining on the right side, and but there's a river in between that's very dark. And there's many pilgrims waiting on the bank to, to cross over to the city. But the water is kind of scary. And so Christian and Hopeful, they go in. You can go to the next slide. And Christian, he gets nervous in the middle of the river because the water is very deep, and he can't touch the bottom. And so he gets a little bit scared, but his friend Hopeful is there to take care of him and to make sure that they make it across okay together. And he encourages him, just like good friends do. And finally, after their long journey, they make it to the gates of the celestial city. And when they, the gates open, they hear a voice cry out, These pilgrims are now come from the city of destruction for the love they bear to the king of this place. So the gates of heaven opened to them, and they entered in. And I was able to look in after them, and I saw the streets were paved with gold, and in them walked with crowns upon their heads, a company of just men made perfect. And the bells of the city rang for joy, for Christian and his fellow had come to their true home. And after that, they shut the gates. And uh, after that, I awoke, and it was a dream. So they made it all the way to the city that they were supposed to get to. What do you think the city stands for in this book? Brock? Heaven. That's right. It's heaven. That's right. They make it all the way to heaven. So, and that is our home, right? If you're a Christian, our home is in heaven, and it's a beautiful and wonderful place. And I hope you all be there with me. And thank you so much for listening to the story. If you get a chance to read it with your parents, I highly recommend it. You guys were very wonderful today. And um, let's pray. And then I guess whoever comes up next can come up. Thank you for listening. Father, thank you for these students and for these teachers, Lord. I pray that you would bless them. I pray that you would watch over them. I pray that if there's people in this room, Lord, that need to know you as Savior, that they would come to know you. Thank you for this little book, Lord, that uh, has so much truth in it, Father, from your word and about life. And I pray that you would help us to be brave, even when things look dark. And I pray that we would cherish our friends. And I pray that we would be kind. Thank you for... Um, 
sending Jesus, Lord, to die on the cross for our sins and for the promise of a home in heaven and all the joy that we will experience there. In Jesus' name.